take the decision to make Dune and you go back home, the first thing you say to yourself is, what about the worms? Which is the big challenge. The sandworm is one of the most iconic things about Dune. The sandworms are responsible for the spice. We have to believe that these are real creatures. And in the case of the way the Fremen view them, almost godlike. With the Fremen, it's not just a sandworm. This is a sacred creature that represents the earth creation, the cycle of life, and also a power that is way beyond them. A sandworm is a massive creature that can be like more than 500 meters long that goes in the deep desert and they are territorial beasts and they want to protect the spice fields. It's a phenomenal animal and there had been a lot of reproduction imagery that came through the years in books and art. It's a very famous beast. The largest and most dangerous organism on Arrakis is the sandworm, known to the Fremen as Shai Hulud. We try to approach the worm with the same concerns that Frank Herbert wrote and created the worm, which is like a biology. How this creature has been transformed and how this creature adapted to this environment and how it feeds, how it hunts, how it moves, how it behaves. And so to create these giant sandworms and have them not look like some Hollywood CG machination, but to have them feel like real organic creatures that you believe could have this kind of presence was a huge task. It's here! It all came from that kind of feeling that the worm will need to look like a survivor through the ages and that it will have that kind of prehistoric quality, that it will have that, those kind of scales and that kind of very rough skin that has been grinded by the sand through centuries, you know? Bless the maker and his water. And also the idea that the worm will need to feed himself through sand krill like microorganism in the sand, so it can filter the sand and get his food out of it like a whale. May his passage cleanse the world and keep the world for his people. The sandworm was unique in that we were concentrating on the mechanics of the movement. We studied real world desert camouflage creatures to understand how they would interact with their own environments and we tried to apply some of those lessons to how these sandworms might function. We had to work very closely with our visual effects vendors to understand how sand might propagate if a giant creature is pushing its way through folding sand dunes. Does sand collapse in the vacuum behind it or does it maintain as a mound above it? And we had to spend months understanding how a worm of that size would move through a huge field of sand and find the balance between the artistic goals and what the real world mechanics might be. There's a unique moment in the film when we finally see the sandworm in its fullest form. We instinctually began that sound design process to create a massive, frightening beast. Denis made very clear to us early on that that was a moment of reverence for a beautiful being. And Theo and I very quickly had to disavow ourselves of that reflex of the Godzilla scream, for lack of a better term, you know. That's the moment where we decided if there's a silent contemplation between the two of them, then we have something very unusual. It's not a monster breaching out of the soil. It's a meeting with God. The initial sounds that you hear are the actual physical artifacts of its being. The orifice, the maw, if you will, it looks like thousands of sinewy tendrils inside the mouth. We created a sound for that what looks like a throat closing mechanism and you hear the physicality of that. And it isn't till near the very end of the sequence where you actually hear what we would call the voice of the worm, but it's nothing like what you would expect. It's a moment of very simple communication. We also found that there was a connection between the sound that the worm makes with its throat, a kind of glunk glunk sound, the sound that the Fremen have been using to attract the worm. So we thought perhaps that suggests that the reason that worms are attracted to that sound is because it sounds like worm communication. It's a thumper. All creatures on the Earth, including humans, are a byproduct of their physical environment where those sounds begin to fuse and become one. One thing I know is that 
we did it. <laughs> I think that Frank Herbert will have appreciate that version of the worm that at the end of the day needs to be a very frightening, impressive creatures and at the same time an incarnation of God. So it needs to have that kind of a uh, ah quality. <laughs> <laughs>